with the Good Morning Portugal show. Happy Monday to you here from me and expatsportugal.com. We have a packed show today. So I have been putting your hellos already on the screen. Uh, good morning to you, Mike Campion. To you, Hank. To you, Jonesy. Uh, Nick Steinman is here. Maxine, Victoria Benson. Look at this. 82 degrees in Atlanta whilst it is snowing in London at the moment with Nick. How amazing. What a wonderful community you have. Far flung all over the globe. Uh, oh, wow. I didn't realize it snowed. It certainly does, Hank. And from the Ribotejo. Back to Portugal now from Thomas. Uh, bon dia from the Ribotejo Valley. And Rowan Ford is here from Devon as well. The, the greetings are pouring in this morning. Ah, I'll be overwhelmed with greetings. This is lovely. Greetings from Harrogate. Did somebody mention photography? Welcome to my world. Mm. Yeah, I think photographers are quietly competitive. I have the wonderful Terence Austin here, who, who isn't only a photographer, not wish, wishing to put photographers down or anything like that, who only do photography, although that's quite unusual, I have to say. Uh, Terence is an absolute renaissance man, uh, artist, renowned artist on the Silver Coast in Portugal. Let's bring him onto the screen now. Here he is, the renaissance man himself. We should have some special Yay. music. <laughs> what a build-up. <laughs> Too much? Oh, no, no, never too much. Quite enough, all right. Just, <laughs> good morning to you, Terence. Good, well, good, good morning. And talking of Renaissance men, let's complete this trio on screen, shall we? Live, I think, from the Algarve, Frank Devane. How are you, Frank? I'm doing amazing. Beautiful you, day in the Algarve. He's, he's actually, you know, he was quite cool before. He's gone down another octave or two on the cool scale, isn't he? Did you hear that? I'm doing great in the south. <laughs> I'm doing great, you know. All you guys out there, huh? <laughs> so how's it going, Frank? <laughs> not bad. Not not as uh, not as not as good as mutton chops over there, but you know, it's 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 good. It's good. <laughs> Okay, uh, you can sense everybody. There's a sense of familiarity on the screen. Not sure where this is going to go, but um, Terence is here to tell us about property photography. But lots of other things are going to come in, and as it's normally um, the food tour on a Monday, Frank will be reporting because. Well, actually, I don't know if I should let him or not. I was quite sickened to receive one picture after another of beautiful food. Him and his new best mate, Tiago, down there in Burgal. Oh, look, there's this picture of the food. There's this picture of the view outside. Oh, here's a picture of me and my best buddy, Tiago. It's like, I'm turning my phone off, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> and on top of that, I called you just to rub it in properly. <laughs> you, did. you did. So we have some lovely photos and video. Oh, food photography. There's another thing. But those, those photos uh, came in through to me beautifully, mixed feelings, as I say there, of je jealousy. And I'm, I'm, I'm pleased for you. I'm pleased for you as well. It sounds like you're having a fantastic time. So uh, yes, property photography, let's kick it off. Cause I think this could be quite a long show. There's so much to say and I must research. Don't say that. Oh yes, he's only got a five minute presentation. <laughs> <laughs> Precious on the terrace. <laughs> okay, so yes, you you rose to the occasion, uh, if I may say so, without sounding at all smutty, um, which is often very difficult for me. Um, but yeah, you heard this call that went out, and we're us giggling at uh, Portuguese property photographs, and you went and did something grown up and adult about it, right? Yeah, um, I've got to be honest. I didn't hear the call go out for property photography, but oh. you know, I'm always trying to do something mature. Um, Really, I suppose in COVID, in the COVID world, um, there's a lot of people out there sort of thinking, well, you know, should do something with the the rental, should do something. I'm, just, I'm talking about Portugal now, but, you know, probably also in America, et cetera, um, and, and Europe. But people should do something, um, especially if they're renting or they want to sell their house. Um, and it's always the classic thing, you know, people um, contact the estate agents and, um, the estate agent trots around with his little camera and, and, and then, you know, they moan a lot about the results that, that happen. Now, to be fair, to be fair to photographers, um, 
or I should say real estate agents first. Um, they're not photographers. Be, be fair to them. They, you know, mainly come from areas like um, finance or um, managerial positions, banking. They're not the most visual people in the world. OK, so to sometimes think that they are going to provide the most excellent photographs is probably not the best way of thinking. Um, I know people sort of they wings at them, you know, but um, really, to be fair to them, um, no, they they're just one of the mill people. So you've either got two choices. You can either get in a, a photographer um, I mean, I've been lucky because I, I've done a lot of work out here, but I've I, I done a lot of uh, TV. Um, I've done a lot of uh, broadcast camera work um, and also worked as a professional photographer. And I like to keep my hand in. I wouldn't say it's my main source of um, activity now, but I do um, like to do, uh, I still like to mess around with it a bit. I mean, once a photographer, always a photographer. But um, I thought I'd put together, um, and I think you can see the old link there, terrenceaustinartist.com. There's a bit of a blog there with 20 sort of uh, things you, you need to consider when you're taking photographs. So um, today, I want to help people that really perhaps don't want to use a photographer, don't want or not probably happy with the estate agency photographs they have, and see where they could have a go do it themselves. Um, that would be marvellous. Um, so, um, <coughs> to kick off, I hey, think can really... I stop you there for a minute, Terry. Oh, sorry. No, 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 it's fine. But this is where it began. This, this is the baseline from which to improve. So, I think it's going to be a f fairly straightforward matter. Uh, this is our classic favourite. If you can see on the screen there, it's all going fairly well as you look around the studio flat. Um, and you can see, yes, I can see ourselves having uh, a lovely um, Sunday breakfast there, croissants, cafetiere of coffee. Let's go out on the balcony. Oh, my God, what's that on the balcony? Actually, somebody, either a dead body or somebody sunbathing on the balcony. Uh, this is this is what, this is an easy job for you. This is like, you know, this is like Man United facing a, a lower league team in a giant killing thing here. So um, I think the stage is set for you to fairly easily waltz in and claim this one, right? Well, to be humble you know we've all been there you know we've all come away from a shoot right and in the old days with film you come away from a shoot and um you always be praying that you got it in the can really because you didn't know but obviously that guy's lying on the terrace there and it's very easy to get caught up in the in the detail of you know trying to present a picture and, and not really looking at it fully so always take a step back and and have a look at the whole picture because um you can miss things like a guy lying down on a terrace who looks like he's been murdered. <laughs> I think you're 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 so fair. You're being so generous and fair here. I've just been there, you know. I've just been there. Thank God for picture editing. That's all I can say. Yeah. Well, he'd have been photoshopped out in your world, I suspect. Oh. Um, I've, I've put the link on there for, uh, for your wonderful um, uh, That's blog. very kind of you. Do you, want me to, do you want me to bring that on screen? Would that help illustrate what you're talking about? Sorry? Do you want me to bring it onto screen? Would that would that help you illustrate what, what you're talking the, the, about? The complete blog, yeah, okay. Okay, all right. I guess Frank keeps um, popping in and out anyway. So, yes, sorry, no, Terry, back, back to you, back to you. Yeah, so um, I think really I'd like to skip through a few things, you know, to help people. And forgive me for looking down here, but I haven't got an electric memory. So I've got my crib sheet jogger. And um, I just thought I'd sort of, you know, uh, quote a few things. But really, there's 20 considerations, you know, really. And I'm, I'm not talking about um, considerations of you've got to have this camera or you've, you know, you've, you, you, you've got to put X amount of finance in. This is most cameras these days will take a decent picture. OK, oh. so don't worry. You are entirely capable of taking a decent picture. OK, the only problem there is come uh, when you were inside and you've got bright light outside and, you know, everything's dark, but we can get you over that. OK, okay. so um, really, I think expect you've got to work hard. Got to James, 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 can you tell me, can you tell my wife that? 
What's, what's the name of your wife, wife yeah, Frank? Uh, uh, Rachel. She she thinks I'm the most incompetent picture taker. Every I just time want to tell I'm you. Picture. I just want to show you before I start what a decent hat looks like, there, fellow. Oh, there you go. There, you know, <laughs> million dollars. It look like garbage. I look like garbage now. <laughs> okay. Um. Quite often, when I arrive on a shoot, I feel like I'm a kind of a furniture removal guy. I literally spend half my time moving furniture rather than taking photographs. Um, if people prepared and cleaned, that would be uh, a good, really probably the most important place to start out of everything. <laughs> clean, 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 declutter, right? Get your place looking crisp. Um, and you'll find that that gives you um, uh, a lot of benefits. Um, try to imagine how a buyer or a renter will look at your property. It's difficult for people because you have to put yourself into their brain and look at things through their eyes. But, um, you know, all your um, sort of accoutrements may not uh, appeal to everybody. So the first thing is do a massive clear out, um, get rid of clutter and, you know, get the vacuum cleaner out and tidy up everything. And then you can see the kind of wood for the trees. Um, and unfortunately, not a lot of people do this. I mean, I've had situations, not so much here, but, you know, back in the UK where you walk out into a yard and there's, there's a load of dog droppings on the, the, the <laughs> and they go, can you edit that out? <laughs> Have you got a shovel? <laughs> well, we have, we've got that photograph on our, on our Facebook group. Now, I, I don't want to be too unkind to people, but, but believe me, it happens, okay? Believe yeah. me, it happens. It with um, our own sorry? We've seen it with our own eyes. We've got the picture. It's 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 in our it's on our top five or top ten of, of classic. Have you right? Well, you you've obviously got the you got the the gun on me there because I haven't seen them. Um, but um, so the major, major, major tip is we've got to reinforce this tidy up, okay? Because I'm getting tired in my dotage and I'm fed up of moving furniture. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're gonna need. Oh, do you want to read that out? Because that's oh Valerie. Hello, Valerie. So you know Valerie. But yeah, you I do. Silver Coast folks. Well, this marvelous this person. Yeah, absolutely agreed. Um, Chris says, in these days in the US, uh, most realtors, estate agents, hire professional photographers when listing a house. Uh, and then Valerie comes back to describe the situation here. Chris, yes, but in the US, you have a seller agency and sellers only sign with one agent so they know they are going to get commission. Here, sellers often list with multiple agents. So if agencies were to pay for every property to have professional photographers is unrealistic i have a lot of sellers provide me with photographs they've taken and haven't had one yet where i would accept them on my website so they need to watch this definitely don't they valerie give them the replay of this i do agree that estate agent photos here leave a bit to be desired but not all are and then we lose her at that point um but yeah i think it's a bit of a defense as well we do have to i, mean, I know we've had a bit of a giggle about it but yeah we are, we do need to be fair and, and that's how, the tone you started with so i thank you for that terence well, yeah, I mean, also remember that, um, you know, uh, people moan as like, estate agents, you know, I'm, I'm not saying uh, Valerie does this, but I've, I've come across it myself, is they, they work on split commissions. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, you may have five estate agents advertising the same property, and that 5% suddenly comes down to 1%. Now, set up the logic, right? Uh, you're going to hire a, you know, uh, a photographer plus all the other costs that people have thrown at them um uh, you know when they're selling property here right not in the usa because in the usa it's high turnover it's a quick market it all happens um here properties can take two years to sell easily that's not unusual okay that's not unusual so you have to take a longer term um perspective and to be fair to estate agents, okay, if they are going to be splitting their commission, you know, down to what is it, you think magnificent 5% and it comes down to 1%, you, you cannot really 
suspend the argument and uphold it and say, look, you know, you've got to have a photographer, you know, you've got to have somebody to stage your property. That's what happens in the US, you know, they've got professional companies that will come in and put your potted plants and your, you know, your pictures and everything. Great. I mean, it's very professional and they lead the world like that. But Portugal's a bit different. It's about survival. And, you know, these guys, um, you, you can criticize them, okay, but there's always the other side of the coin too, which um, has to be considered. Um, so my point is you can do it yourself. It's probably safer to do it yourself. And if you fail, you can always bring the, you know, the real estate photographer in or a photographer, okay? Um, but following these 20 tips, which you'll find on terrenceaustinartist.com in the blog section, welcome. Because um, I did work quite hard. I spent two days doing this. Can you believe it? I don't write very quickly. <laughs> yeah, I think he, he, he paints pictures and takes photographs quicker than he writes. So, yeah, do take a look, folks. Yeah, I am actually, I am actually, I've got to remember, I am dyslexic. A lot of, a lot of artists are, a lot of creatives. Um, so if there's any spelling mistakes in there. <laughs> well, we appreciate it. We appreciate it, Terence, and, and your fairness in starting out. So we've dealt with dog droppings and moving furniture and generally tidying up after yourself before you get cracking. And also, yes, to have some confidence and faith in yourself, which I think is a, a, an excellent start. Yeah, and have some fun, okay? Because let's be honest, right? We're all there sitting at home, you know, with COVID, et cetera. Um, we've watched all the episodes of whatever we're going to watch. What about actually taking some photographs, getting out there? Even if you take half the photographs and they're great, you know, um, for, for your rentals, um, you could always bring somebody else in to take the other half, okay? Um, so you're reducing costs. But I think it'd be good for people to try. Live in my, you know, walk a mile in my boots. Now, I've only got size seven shoes, so some people may be a bit sort of crammed in there and a bit tight. Um, but um, have a go, have a go. Now, what I, what I wanted to say, let's get this right. Yes, thumbs, they are very important. Now, um, you probably think, well, why are they important? Thumbnails, picture thumbnails, yeah? They sell your property, whether you're renting or whether you're selling a property, picture that you're, you, you're in there and you're up against a, a 50 properties a page. Yeah. What is it you think that's going to make people stop and look at that little thumbnail picture? Got any ideas? The faucet. The, the faucet. The faucet. <laughs> or the bloat line on the terrace. <laughs> I've seen, I've, seen some, I've seen some. I've seen some uh, uh, photographs uh, which are well. It's it's sometimes you have a laugh. There's like four different angles of the same faucet, and I I'm, I'm wondering are they they must love their faucet. It, it's it, they must love it more than their property because you some of the pictures that you see it's like 45 pictures in there, and out of 45, probably two or three are uh, unbelievable. What I wanted to ask you, um, Terence is when you um, shoot uh, pictures, I guess it's the angle as well, natural light uh, and everything else. Is it, don't you think that when you do property pictures, the first picture should be, well, I guess the, the stream of picture should be you uh, showing the viewer how you get inside the property. Uh, not, uh, not The first shot should not be of the outside. The first shot should be of the inside and then you show the outside. Which way you would, how, how would you set these pictures up? Do you know, Frank, that's a very, very, very interesting um, uh, question. A good question, because most people think that you've got to have an exterior shot, you know, because we all talk about curb appeal. Um, uh, you're sort of raising the, the, the spectre of, well, why not choose perhaps a detail inside? You might have like a water feature or um, a tennis court or a great pool, yeah, or a brilliant library which, you know, stacked with books. And, and really, I, I think that's, that's a great question because it makes you think about the property. Think about the property and think about who is going to be interested in your property. So, for instance, if you have a tremendous library with a wonderful spiral staircase, hey, man, put that as a shot, yeah? If that's what you want to kick it off with, yeah, 
Why not? Because it will actually make you stand out against the crowd. But probably a more general rule which would help people is think about geometry, okay? And you probably think, well, crazy, what am I, a mathematician? But think about the way um, a property um, looks with colour and tone uh, and the shape of the property, because that's what will actually stop the eye. I'm talking about a, a bold design. Oh, we've got a, a Lee. Do you want to read that one out? Well, the, 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 a few things here, but um, this was just somebody in, in Lee, our head gardener. He'll be with us tonight for the gardening Q and A. But as well as gardening, he also runs the Lisbon Photography Club. Lisboa Photography. Fabulous. Club. Yes, wow. if you're interested in photography and meeting great people, join the club on Facebook. So there you go. A lot of lovely um, connections to photography here. Uh, but yeah, yeah. there there is a beautiful image that illustrates perfectly, I think. Um, the 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 sense of or yeah the geometry that the eye is attracted to we like order don't we and that's we part love of order thing. yes it's a, yeah. it's a great point we love order we love construction and we don't like blockages to the eye now what yeah. I mean by that is a dirty great sofa running straight across the room so you've obstructed a view or feeling like you're going to trip over something yeah. so um, if you can let the eye travel through space around objects, around the geometry of uh, your property or any photograph, could be a landscape, you're actually helping the viewer take a tour and see the property. So thumbnails are very important. They're probably the most important because remember, you're up against 50, 60 shots, you know, people scan, scan, scan. But well, that's the point is very good point. I think that's, that's that's the value for money here. That's why Terence gets paid the well, he doesn't get paid the big bucks, but that's why he should get paid the big bucks because this is what this is what you're dealing with. Can you put what, that on a bit of paper and sign it? No, definitely not. Um, but this, this is <laughs> customer. This is what the the first person, the, the people you don't know yet, who might buy your house. This is their first view of your house, isn't it? And this is what will draw yeah. them in. So it's all very well to have a like a, an eight by ten pack shot, if you like, of the house you know, retouched and photoshopped. Well, look at my amazing house. That'd be lovely in a frame. That's not what people are going to see for the very first time. These are the sort of images they're going to see for the very first time. Yeah. And often not as big as that on the screen. And thank you. Thank you so much for raising that point too. Photoshop, yeah, and sort of other editing packages. I have a little, I'm probably a little bit weird to other photographers because I tend not to use those after, um, after shoot post-shoot packages so much um, because you're not really out to kind of like do a corporate shoot here. You need to convince people this is a natural place, okay? It's a home. It's not a hotel. And I, I see many times people, the classic thing photographers do is they, is they come and they, they stand in a room and for half an hour and take eight exposures of a room and then Post-edit, they stack all the exposures up so you get perfect lighting, perfect this, and then they put a load of filters on it. And it, it, it's it's a bit of an internet thing now. You, you've lost the, the natural look and feel of a home because mm. it no longer looks like that. So be very, very careful, you know. Um, this is why I'm not sort of, you know, in my blog putting any post-edit um, uh filter information or, or packages together for people because you don't need them not to make your, your property look you know warm inviting and natural another excellent point brilliant and, and, and this is connected to it isn't it? this is this is point six in your blog this is and this is a great approach and i think jenny is also talking about this picture your real estate as your favorite shop so again this is excitement for the eye isn't it well, yeah, you, you, it's a bit of a problem for Frank because obviously his favourite shop is the local butchers. So <laughs> red meat on the walls. <laughs> well, and you can have you can have sexy butcher pictures. Yeah, oh, it, why it's not? Like, it's, the, it's, it, it's 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 the angle. If the it's the angle of the meat, uh, put some rosemary on there, and it will look beautiful, right? And the sunshine getting <laughs> getting right on the meat. I'll oh, take I'm the sorry. I'm, I'm 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 pissing the vegans off. No, no, no. I I didn't mean that. That is the worst chat up line ever, isn't it? 
<laughs> we can make meat look sexy. I, I think let's move on. So they, how do you how do you actually make your house look like a shop? And what do you mean by that? Or your favourite shop to boot? Well, thanks thanks for heading up that that question. Um, really. Think about you know the the you know the shops you've you've been into that are all color coded. I'm talking about blocks of color basically. Even your local supermarket, have a look at the shelves and look how they present goods. This is the business you're in, okay? You are presenting a product. The product is your house, whether it's for renting, uh, vacation lets, or selling. It's still a product, and don't look at it as your house anymore. Look at it as it um, is. It going to be useful to this? Uh, type of person um, but it's always good I've, I've found to picture your favorite uh, type of shops boutiques whatever and and have a look at the way they light and have a look at the way they organize products and if you've got books and pictures and cushions and um, carpets use a theme you know often people say use an accent color in your room and that's really really uh, true but don't overdo it yeah. Um, yeah. Unless you've got this, you know, wonderful property that's all about clutter and 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 old chintz and all of that, then yeah, go for it. But normally people don't like that. They like order, and they like um, a kind of almost a geometric mathematical progression through a house. Yeah. So yeah. good point. So um, let's move on to point seven. Less of you in pictures and more of them, which covers the same thing. Remove your nick knackery. Yeah, mm -hmm. because. You know, you may like, I mean, I, I, I might love, you know, the uh, uh, League Cup um, winner's uh, football shirt of Birmingham City FC. Yeah, marvellous. Silverware. <laughs> go, ask, go ask Aston Villa fans what silverware looks like. Um, <laughs> and uh, not everybody, well, Villa fan wouldn't like that, would they? No. Seriously. So declutter, depersonalize, you know, um, Frank, get rid of all that meat on your walls. <laughs> yes. Otherwise it looks like Lady Gaga's flat. But, yeah, that's not everybody's taste, unless you go doing a special shoot and listing for, you know, Meat Lovers Weekly or something like that. Because, again, <laughs> the niche is important, isn't it? But you don't get the, the niche. Don't get your niches in a twist. Don't get your niches in a twist. Marvellous journalism coming okay. out there. I'll, let me write that one down. Uh, number eight, don't shoot like a drunk, kids. Okay? The amount of times I see verticals off, you know, they're like that. And um, it's so easy to do. Look through the viewfinder and you will see most viewfinders have verticals in them. Align your, your verticals with the verticals in your viewfinder and you will not go far wrong. The amount of times some people take skewed pictures, and it can make you feel a bit sick. Yeah, it's often. Yeah. And the classic is, seaside, isn't it? I mean, you're you're, you're a painter of on, based on the Silver Coast. You do a lot of seascapes, and that is that's rule number one, isn't it? Unless you're going for some sort of weird effect. But the horizon has to be uh, plum level, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, even in painting, you can't get away with the dodgy horizon. Yeah. Okay. Unless you're you're after a Batman effect, you know, yeah. um, Cape Crusader. <laughs> you may have your angle for people, yeah, to people yeah. to to look at at um, your property. But speaking speaking of of Batman, Terence, I uh, I saw a picture, uh, and it was actually very well taken. Um, I saw a picture of uh, of your brother uh, Gary. He took a picture of himself, like you know, the very Beatles Beatles esque. Uh, he uh, like you know, half, wells. Half, yeah, or well, half of it like kind of shaded, and the other uh, other half was kind of whatever. And he was looking like you know very serious, like he's about to lay down the law. It was it was it was a wonderful it was a wonderful picture. I, I wonder if you took that picture. No, I didn't. But I'm going to tell you something really really interesting now. Out of my family, uh, my brother should have been the photographer. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, because he does take wonderful shots. He's got a great gift for getting really candid personal shots and that depict a personality. And I often, um, because I started out as a portrait painter, etc., and then I moved into video production and, and all of that, that really I love working with him because 
um, we can have we have a language between ourselves, which is a visual language. But he is more gifted than I am. Um, he has, you know, he should have he should have gone in that direction. Really, it would have helped him a, a great deal. He's very um, he's very underrated, really, as a as a as a human being. And I, I, and I shouldn't call him Orson Welles in that picture, should I? <laughs> Phrase there. That's quite a brotherly put down, isn't he? He's quite underrated as a human being. But from what you're saying, the, the moody shot, this is not what we want in, in, in the context we're talking about here. Of, of, of Good property. point. Yeah. Like you, that's, you, that's what, what he does at the weekends is his business. But if we're shooting a house, we don't want to be all that sort of moody stuff where you're trying to interpret what's yeah, going on. Exactly. Well done. Because, you know, Somebody looking at these moody shots, they may go, "Wow, great photography!" But could I live there? You know, <laughs> no Vincent idea. Price walking under balcony. I was, <laughs> I was also, I was also thinking that a lot of the, a lot of the pictures that I really, really like and the way that they are shot are in subways. There is this uh, subway in uh, Munich called Marienplatz uh, Station. And if you look at it, uh, whichever way you photograph the subway from inside, it looks very Kubrick's, uh, like, uh, like, you know, Kubrick, the way he used to yeah, yeah, yeah. shoot movies and the way he used to clockwork orange, the way he, he, he used to have his shots lined up. It looks very much um, like that. If you are yeah. going to uh, take pictures, would you uh, work with angles uh like a lot i know you're saying geometry but what is the what is the best like should the angle be from top should it be like you looking outside how, how would you set up the angle well the the classic information on this that, that you'll always find in books is one use a tripod and two um probably shoot somewhere about the sort of five foot six level which i don't know really what that is in meters about a meter and a half i suppose a meter and a more um, that doesn't work, especially in bathrooms, for instance, because um, <laughs> it sounds ridiculous, but, you know, people, um, uh, they never take pic good pictures of, of, of bathrooms because there's, there, there are too many mirrors. There's too much reflection in tiles. You try and use flash in there and, you know, you've got all sorts of uh, highlights. Um, so really the only thing you can do is actually get up high and kind of look down on the, the floor plan and try and get as many fixtures and fittings in, in the bathroom as possible. And quite often, you know, sometimes you're in the corner of a room, right, like this, and your head's literally squeezed up there on a ladder, right, and it's slipping away from you. You think, I'm going to have a bad accident here. Um, but that's what you've got to do you, to, to, to get that kind of – so I can understand when you say, you know, should you be using angles? Yeah. But also, uh, there is a thing in photography where a lot of times people use big, big wide-angle lenses, and all, and sometimes I've seen fisheye lenses, and actually the effect on you, the psychological effect on on you as a viewer, is to turn you a bit sick, actually. So I try not to use um, so much of a wide-angle lens. I think the, I'll go down to about eighteen millimeter, and that's it. Below that, angle study distorting in the corners of your frame and we're back to like a kind of hor uh, horror finish um on your pictures which you don't want you want people to have confidence to, you know this is a home this is where they're going to spend quite a, a, a lot of their time this is where they're going to rent their ideal vacation yeah so you, you, you know the vincent price look doesn't really doesn't really work you know yeah, or the 60s flashback we don't want yeah. that uh, Max, uh, the, quality, the quality of photography on a stage. But I think Max has joined us late here. Um, we did, we did make some <coughs> but and, and set the context on that. But I, I have to say personally, I do agree with you, Max. Um, Johnny is saying another ad advice is remove private things, and I think uh, Terence alluded to that earlier on with the, with the general idea to tidy up. You get rid of things that have nothing to do with the property and put it on a, a reasonable size on the website so that the seller doesn't have to use a magnifying glass. So I guess, yes, good thumbnails. Is it is it true to say then, going back to the thumbnail thing, Terence, that if you've taken um, a, a thumbnail that's good, when you scale it up, it will still look good? Well, yeah, I mean, if, 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 if uh, the thumbnails are, are low-resolution images, but you'll still see the property. 
Yeah. But if you blow a thumbnail up, it's not it's not going to look um, great. But that, that, that's how it is though, on, a, on an estate agency website, isn't it? You click through what, well, and it clicks through to a higher res version. Does it? Is that how it works? And then you've got the yeah. same. But oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so yeah. you've you've got your high res thing, but the principles, you know, the golden means and the the thirds and everything are still there, aren't they? From the small one to the big one, and that's what we're looking to preserve, right? Yeah. I mean, for instance, if you look at my eyes in this picture now, right? Yeah. And you talk about the golden mean. If I put my eyes up to that level, yeah, yeah, you're going to yeah. like it more than if I put my eyes down to that level. He's playing okay. with. Get the oh, point. I like it. Yeah, <laughs> and you're talking about the golden mean, the rule of thirds. If you yeah. draw a line across where my eyes are, that's a pretty much about a third, and we're all comfortable there. Yeah. I'm slouching a bit and my eyes come down a little bit, but I'm I'm, I'm okay with it. I can live with that. Yes, so I don't yes. want to do the whole interview like that. <clears throat> so proportions and thirds and all that, important. Angles, yeah, to an extent. And then, um, no, stop yourself because it's going to go slightly bizarre. So a decent wide angle lens is, is a must. But most most if you most mobile phone cameras have a decent wide angle lens these days, you know, okay. and, and, and and the um, sort of resolution is there, you know. So don't scare, don't be scared of it. Have a go. Um, the other thing I wanted to tell people is get your step ladders out, okay? Yeah. Because step ladders, as you're showing here in the high wide shot, um, do give you that you know big panoramic over-encompassing view and quite often that's what people are looking for um, with estate agent um, photography is you know the see everything as long as it doesn't bend and as long as it doesn't warp and and so get as much into that uh, uh, as you can so note of caution step ladders can be a bit wobbly okay so i don't want anybody blaming me if they come off Right, it, get somebody yeah. to hold the step ladders. It's a shame we live in a place where you have to advise people how to use a step ladder, but well said. <clears throat> so, I touched on the fact there that you know, number 10 on my list is a wide angle lens, it's a must. Okay, you can't, you can't. I've seen photographers turn up. Have you ever seen those really long lenses? Yes, shoot. yes, the pressure if, if, one, <clears throat> if a guy turns up with a really long lens on a shoot to shoot your house, uh, basically. Uh, kick him out the door because really it's going to take a picture of about that size yeah. the longer the lens the smaller the picture the shorter the lens the wider the picture mm -hmm. so you want somebody turning up with a nice short lens okay because um, it's 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 a kind of penis envy type thing that the people do um i'm talking about guys that they, they turn up with a lot of kit you know and having a big old lens yeah there's nothing there. great for sports photography yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. you know pictures of, of gaza or whatever i'm really showing my age now uh, yeah. well, for younger <laughs> listeners, that's a, an ancient football player in case you need to know from yes, the night, yes. from the 1980s for, yes. for, for, for the americans in the audience football is a game played with the feet and a round ball <laughs> oh he's kicked it off now it was going so well, wasn't it? It was going so well. <laughs> Again, hate mail. Terence has been laughing aloud. He's utterly spot on. What a fabulous guest. Thank you. Thank you, Max. Um, yes. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll send you the money in the post, okay? Thanks, Max. Max Blight. Um, yes. And I dare say, we, we, we've sussed out that particular photographer who turns up with his big lens. No, no doubt has a, a convertible with a big bonnet as well. So we, wide angle, not telephoto. There you go. There you here. go. Excellent. Some of okay. my... Wait, on number 11, avoiding... Number 11. Gun. Yes. Number 11 on our list. Great Some days. Some have mention already of this, uh, about the lighting and how it might be difficult for people in the north of Portugal to take a big, to take a good picture. Come on! It's not that... <laughs> but it's not like the Silver Coast. You're blessed, aren't you, on the Silver Coast with beautiful we light. We are... Photographs. It's fabulous. We are blessed. This is one of, it's one of the main reasons, apart from, you know, for the kids who have had a great life here. Um, I moved to Portugal was the light. Light bounces around um, all over the place here and fills shadows. And that's what you want is to look into shadows and be able to see something. In the UK, northern latitudes, everything's a bit depressed. You know, you can't see into things and you need to see into things. So as a painter, 
pitch perfect. I mean, it's like Mediterranean light on the Atlantic, um, <laughs> if that makes sense. So, yeah, avoid grey days, misty days, wet days. Who wants to see wet days, you know? Um, wait for a decent day. Few clouds in the sky. People always go, oh, clouds, clouds. No, no, no. Wait for a clear blue day. No, but clouds actually stop a sky, a sky uh, being boring. You know, they put a bit of patination in there and a bit of visual entertainment. So really, um, a good, a good, not a cloudy day, but broken cloud is as, as good as, as you want. Mm. Nice, long, broken cloud day. I mean, a lot of times people here, they say, oh, um, especially if they're renting properties, um, and they their sort of season ends in kind of October, and so they start thinking about doing um, – pictures uh in december january what an awful time to do pictures because every yeah, it's raining you know and there's wet on the ground and you, you're running in and out of, of you know the exterior interior to see whether the rain stopped yet so shoot in the summer but avoid the kind of like july august because conversely i mean it's like a it's like the sun out there it's like you know a furnace and it's very bright now a little thing you can do is right if you get your a pair of sunglasses which these aren't right and you don't have filters is try putting a, a, a pair of sunglasses or a sunglass lens on your on your camera while you're shooting you can actually get decent results and if your camera's set to automatic it's going to do all the calculations for you yeah. okay yeah. and you'll stop all that glare and all that kind of like whoa See, if we, we all have out here very uh, usually light, bright houses. And, I mean, it, it, the sun really does get intense here in July, August. Um, so so I, I, I we're, going the, we're going to the island. Um, sorry, I lost that, I, that we're one going, there. We're going into the ideal window now from spring before high summer would be the best. I mean, great timing then. April's always difficult because April here, the, you know, the song April showers. Yeah. It's so true here. We get April showers, April downpours, and then we get intense sunlight. So really, April, skip it by a bit. If yeah, June, July, yeah, um, August. Best month is October. Interesting. Photographers love October because the atmosphere is clear. You can see into the distance. Everything is crystal. Okay. And it, it, it's true here too. We get a lot of water vapor in the air which gives us a lot of mistiness and you can't see, you know, into the distance. That doesn't affect um, estate agent photography so much, but October is a terrific time. We don't get autumn and sorry, fall. We don't get fall here, you know, um, so much, but um, it's still a great time to shoot. You know, you're not getting all the golds and all that, but it's still a fabulous, fabulous time to shoot. So avoid gray days. That was a very long-winded way in saying avoid grey days. <laughs> That's okay. I think <laughs> How long did that take me to say avoid grey days? No, no, a point well made, sir. And we've found the optimum months for doing it. But then again, you know, if you have to crack on at the ideal time of year, uh, if you have to crack on at the time of year you've got, then, you know, you have to factor in all the other points that uh, Terence is making here. This one, what does this one mean? The sun shines over real estate photography. And before you answer that, a point of order here, I think, from um, a, a, a psychologist. Factually, according to Freud, penis envy is a female phenomenon, Terence, uh, but your comparison to lens length made it relevant here. So you, you, the point of order, well made, well taken, I suspect. Well, we're in, we're in here deep, aren't we? I mean, I'm sinking now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, I think you, you, you just about saved, well, you know, an allowance was made for, uh, for you from the from the psychological fraternity. So we're okay. But thank you, Chris Thomas, for that. Where else are you going to get insight like that on on a, on a daily? Exactly, webinar? exactly. All these people turning up thinking, oh, I was going to be a boring photographer talking. And we were talking about penis envy and Freud. Come on. And now Hasselblads, which aren't connected. Think about your picture before you shoot. I still think about it like I was using my Hasselblad with my maximum of 12 pictures. Here's a really good point. With digital, you can tend to overshoot and make a massive job for yourself later on, right? You've probably covered that somewhere. Do you know, Jeannie, that's a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous point, okay? Because in the old days of film, you you know, you had 36 on a roll or whatever, if you're doing 35 mil, 
Um, and that was all, unless you carried loads more, that was, that was all you got, you know? So, you, you know, you had to get it in one and that was a wonderful discipline to work to. It really made you focus. Now we just blag off shots all over the place and, you know, we shoot a hundred and if we got two, that's good. Hey, hey, we're photographers. But in the old days, you know, and those weren't so far away. Uh, it was good discipline, um, you know, to say, look, this is 14 shots here is, is all I've got. So let's, let's make them count. Yeah. To live under that yeah. pressure is a good pressure. So fabulous genie, excellent point. Frank's obviously point about meat on the walls was good. Um, and, and genie's was excellent. It's so fair, <laughs> fair terms. Yeah, well, well, of, oh, sunshine. Good. Yeah. The sunshine's on over real estate. What I'm really talking about there is Get the sun over your shoulder. Don't be looking into the sun, okay? Because if you look into the sun, everything's going to turn black and white, okay? Everything's going to turn silhouette. Great if you're looking for that effect, but I don't think estate agent, um, real estate photography is uh, about that. It's about getting a good, bright, salesy, um, but not overly so, finish on your work to help people buy your property, to help people rent your property and to help people to have a nice holiday there. Yeah. So get it over your shoulder. It works for you then. It's, it's you know, um, it's just common sense really, isn't it? Well, you make, you're, you're, you're flipping in these extra bits of value all the time. And you, and you said there, you're basically selling a holiday home. But if it's a more permanent home, that's still good advice, isn't it? Because you want to feel like you're on holiday all the time when you move to Portugal. That's that's part of the sort of a psychological attraction, isn't it? And if you shoot the photos like you're, wow, you know, we're going to be out there barbecuing, we're going to be by the pool, we're going to be enjoying the sunshine and those lovely blue skies, shoot it like it's a holiday shoot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wonderful point again, okay, because you're talking, you, you're edging up to kind of like the subliminal messages that you put and as also knowing your audience. You've, uh, I mean, working in TV, working in my own video production company, um, you had to know your audience. You have to study your audience. You've got, you, you know, you've got to know them like you know your best mate. Um, and there's nothing wrong in that, okay? That's communication. And I'm sure, you know, both of you guys are aware of that. Frank, if, you, if you're running a, a restaurant, you go to a restaurant in a certain area, you've got a certain clientele. Yeah, you've got to appeal. To, you've got to do food that's going to bring those the punters through the door. You're doing a radio show, Carl. Um, you've got to get your message right for the people here in Portugal. You've got to get your message right for the people that you're trying to attract. Um, and I love that. I mean, that is that's uh, e even in, in painting. Okay, P people say, "Oh, fine art." You know, it's all about the person and your feelings and this, that, and the other. To me, it isn't it's it's about like helping people put a picture on the wall that they can be happy with for the rest of their lives. And they can look at every day and see something interesting and different, you know? Um, and that's very important. So think and get that type of finish for your photography. And you can do it sitting at home. You can do it if you really think and look. Use, use these, okay? They'll give us a reason. That's a fascinating thing. Oh, so, so Terrence, if you if you if you have like let's say for example, if you have a studio apartment, right? You've just got one room, and I've seen this happen on on quite a few pictures, where what they do is they want to obviously make it look very big. So sometimes they stretch the picture a bit uh, when they when they're selling it. What would you say if you've just got one room and one toilet to show and and uh, your balcony? What would you say is the best way to shoot a room like that? And how many pictures would you have? Like, let's say uh, a studio apartment. Okay. I mean, you go back to your point that, you know, 100 photographs are not really going to do that any justice. Okay. But you've got – what's hitting me is, is two things. You mentioned a balcony. Yeah. What fabulous times can you have with friends, family, you know, uh, kids, uh, as long as it's safe? Do a setup on a balcony. Do a setup for breakfast, do a setup for lunch, and do a setup for dinner and put some candles out and show people how they can enjoy that space. 
Brilliant. Yeah. Um, have the view in the background. Okay, you may have be lucky enough to have an ocean view. So also, if you're in a good location like that, put some shots in of the area. It's not just about the property. It's about what's around. It may be close to Lisbon. Why not put a shot in of Lisbon? Porto, yeah? So the story to tell, it's how you tell the story. And you are allowed to do this, okay? Don't feel constrained that, you know, think, well, I've got to put uh, 40 shots of one room. Mm -hmm. Who wants to see 40 shots of one room, you know? So think about how your property could be used um, and, and, and what for. Um, and try to communicate the lifestyle. You know, let's be honest, somebody that's in a one-bedroom um, property is not going to stay in there very long. So we'll show them the life that's outside. You know, 30 yards you, down the road, you may have a brilliant bar. Go take some pictures of the bar. <laughs> yeah. They may have great food. Yeah. So show the classic meals. Tell the story, you know. Tell us, tell tell people of what's there. Inform them. Inform them. They won't. You I've, know. I've seen I've seen some pictures. I've I've seen some uh, some photographers and uh, and they're obviously amateur, but they've done a wonderful job. Where in a studio apartment, they show pictures of the appliances. So if they've got like a catchy appliance, they've got like you know one of those old fashioned looking toasters. They'll do an angle with the toaster and whatever, or they will show uh, their uh, like washing machine or something. And they will do it in an angle where it, it, it actually looks good. It shows that, you know, you've got these appliances. And Would you recommend that? Um, not so much. Okay. okay. Washing machines. Um, okay. A washing machine is a washing machine. It's good to show that you've got washing machines. It's good to show you've got drying capabilities, but you don't have to overdo it. I mean, you know, if I was doing a product shot of a washing machine, I'd be putting light inside the drum. Yeah. And, and, and you don't have to go that far. You know, I mean, how much of a washing machine do you need to explain? You just say, look, we got the facilities, a decent shot of a washing machine. Don't worry about it. As long as it's not overexposed or underexposed, you're fine. And put your camera on to automatic, automatic you're going to get, you know, a good finish. Excuse me, talking too much. It's all right. Oh, yeah. You've just joined us. We have Terence Austin here. <laughs> the yeah. Silver Coast of Portugal, where... Um, he uh, plays his trade, and I love that insight into fine art. That was fantastic. That you're not, you know, this is you haven't got a Terence's picture on your wall saying this is from his angsty period of pe penis envy back in, uh, you know, 2020. This is a picture for you that you want to have on your wall for the rest of your life. It's not about the artist so much. I'm just on top of that. It's not about the rest of your life, okay? I, okay. Because when you have these paintings done, I, I work a lot to commission. Okay, and I, I, I'm not fooling people here. I have a heavy, heavy responsibility, right? Fade in dramatic music. But think about this painting that is now going to be viewed in 200 and 300 years' time. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So what kind of messages are we sending to people then, you know? Um, oh, love it. It's, it's really... Artists never really think about this, you know? They never consider what they're doing today will be seen in 300 years' time. So it's something you, you, you work at getting right, okay? It's not one of these things that, you know, just blag off what, yeah, that's it. That's how I felt at the moment. With me, it's almost like um, I need to kind of understand the client and their life and their perspectives, what they like. And I love all this, okay? I, I think they help me become a better artist because of this. Right. So don't hold back. Um, and I encourage them because, you know, when they come through the door, I'm looking at what they're wearing. I'm looking at, you know, what kind of dress has this lady got or this guy's got a pair of glasses. Um, what do they read? What Anything really that will get you going to understand the person. It's a bit like... Um, Al Pacino, and um, because Al Pacino has like one way of acting, um, right? He, he, he's Al Pacino, you know, good actor, but he's Al Pacino. Robert De Niro has many levels to his acting, mm. right? Mm. And and really, he's a marvelous. Um, and I never, m my wife had to point this out to me, okay? But the more I looked at him, and the more I saw how multi leveled he was, he can do comedy, he's a gangster. Yeah, serious, you know, light comedy. 
that's really the kind of artist that uh, I, I am really Robert De Niro. Yeah, the Robert De Niro of, of art it, it, and, and specifically on the Silver Coast. So uh, Terence Austin, artist.com, <laughs> book up a session. If you, I mean, who wouldn't want to experience that? <laughs> you, you, yeah, you like me fruit. <laughs> you talking to me? You talking to me? You talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> all right, sorry. Practically so easily. Well, we're all so easily distracted here. Um, and we've got 20 points to touch on. And we're going to Bergan to look at Frank's date with his new bezzy mate, Tiago. I'm not jealous. Uh, and a wonderful um, tasting menu that you experienced yesterday. Um, so um, let's um, bring in the comments. Want me to speed this up a bit? Well, no, I mean, I'm I'm really enjoying it. But, you know, it, mm -hmm. to be fair, I guess people do have things to do. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so maybe let's let's go to number 13, avoid shooting too early and too late. Good advice in many areas of life. Yeah, yeah. The basic reason is you stand inside a house at sort of nine o'clock, eight o'clock in the morning. The sun's quite low in the sky, especially we're talking about intense light bursting through a room. That's going to give you difficulty, OK? That's going to give you what cameras hate big contrast between light and dark, okay? Avoid that, wait for the sun to get higher about 11 o'clock in the sky, 12, and there you're getting reflected light coming into the room, something you can balance for, you know? So once the, that sunlight's very low, although photographers love that time of day if they're doing landscapes because it's all moody and everything, it's not so good for house photography because the thing's just blasting through hitting going through like a train like a whirlwind okay so next this is this, this, this i think he took the hint pretty well there didn't he um 14 the cars are not the stars so yeah long. the only time a car is the star is if you've got a wonderfully big garage yeah and perhaps you want to appeal to somebody that does mm -hmm. a bit of you know classic car maintenance show um show the size of the garage really quite often you know people stick very expensive cars outside their house you know to kind of do the lifestyle thing and people read that clear the cars out of the way the reason you clear the cars out of the way is they can see how much parking they've got themselves think about the people that looking at the property you know so no so, so no shots uh, drone shots of the tool shed well it may be a particularly Fine example of a Georgian tool shed, which you may want to highlight, but no, not really. <laughs> okay. Have you seen my Georgian tool shed? With this, with this three-minute video, with the, I mean, that's something I really dislike about a property photography. And this isn't aimed at the uh, the awkward end that we started with. This is aimed at the so-called high end, where you've got a drone <laughs> footage uh, with music, with some cheesy music from a library, quite dramatic, probably. And it's like you're seven minutes into the drone thing. And you look at it, uh, you know how, I don't know if anyone else does this, but you hover your mouse over the over the YouTube video link and you see it's like 18 minutes long. And this is because they've paid the drone pilot 250 euros or something to make this. So we are having all of it. And you okay. don't get any value after the first two minutes. Very, 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 very important point. Don't bore your audience. Two yeah. minutes. Two minutes on a property video. Come on. Yeah, What's come this on, 15 on. minutes? You're not, you know, you're not Spielberg here. Come on. Come on. All right. So daylight, daylight is the best setting for real estate photography. Well, it is. And it's also for painting. OK, because it's natural. It burns at the highest temperature that, you know, you can uh, think. Um, so it's natural. It looks um, acceptable. Um, there is a situation that if you get yourself in a, in a uh, like a room with no windows, adjust your camera to indoor light because all your pictures will sh will turn out blue um uh, and not a nice blue so um but when you're in a property use the daylight use the natural daylight and flash is is really aimed at being daylight okay so leave, which, leave, leave the lights on leave. yeah leave the lights on put all the lights on in the house okay you think what in the daytime what are you crazy uh, yeah, but it works. You know, if if you've got a bad corner and you've got a table lamp, it's going to throw a nice bit of pattern on the walls. It's also going to delineate what's in the corners and it will work. I guarantee you it will work. So don't be stingy. Put all the lights on and they look great at night. OK, when you've got your pool shut and the lights reflecting off the pool and 
Little tip about shooting at night, go for the lighted areas. Don't go for the big shot. Go for the areas that are lit, okay, that you don't have to light because you'll destroy the food anyway. So just look at the, you know, the pool may have a lot of reflective light shot of the pool, get the house in at the background, but don't try and search too much of the landscape because you're going to make turn everything dark. Very good. You, find you the light. Know. It's like the actors. Find the light on the stage and you become the star. Ah, very good. Um, I, I particularly like the way you've put me in the middle today. Thank you very much. I have some some artistic sensibility there. Uh, uh, yes, I didn't want to hear from your agent. Like, why on earth is Terence on the <laughs> right of the shot? <laughs> Flash photo. It happens. It's happened. Okay. Quick results number seventeen. So I, I would, I would be scared to use flash because it's so harsh. But you say no. Yeah, you, you give me some great feeding lines here. Um, okay. Flash is very harsh. Okay, so what you've got to do basically, if you've got a camera that um, has a flash built in, and that's all you've got, get some tracing paper or uh, baking paper and start experimenting put some over the flash part of the camera to diffuse the light and just increase the levels uh, you may need two or three layers to decrease the light emanating from the shot or from the camera and it, it will diffuse the light everybody likes diffused light okay you're not after really dramatic dun, 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 lighting you, it's a good general sort of light setting or you could get now let me get this straight you could get one of those okay now this is a very cheap okay flash you put it on top of your camera and when i say bounce light if you're shooting and you're shooting that way yeah get get it and bounce it off a wall at the back or at the side okay not directly on or off the ceiling you're going to have to experiment but this actually stops you messing with your camera and going f stops and all that because it's a very easy way to reduce and, and uh, get a balance because you don't need good technical information. You just move your flash. It's like the old days when you, you, know, you know, you've got actors or whatever, you move the lights away from them. And if you wanted less intensity in the lights, you know, there's no dimmers or anything. You just <laughs> move the light away. It's mathematical. So if you bounce light off a wall, it's going to illuminate and spread better and be less, ha less harsh. There you go. So, it will flash. Very good, that man. I don't know who led me in there, but uh, top marks. Okay, thank you very much. 18, how to beat big problems in small spaces. I think we've dealt with this to some extent. We've done that one, haven't we? It's all about getting high, looking down, yeah, it's making sure that the toilet seat's down. Um, don't be laughed. It's, it's happened to me sometimes. I've come away from a shoot that, oh, my God, I left the toilet, the toilet seat up. The toilet seat. Toilet um, seat. <laughs> And when, and when Terence said to get high, he means use a stepladder. He doesn't mean yeah. <laughs> drugs before you do well, what, what you guys do at home, okay, in Portugal, it's up to you. But I'm hey. talking about a stepladder here. Okay, keep keep moving props around. <laughs> keep, yeah, it keep moving them about. Yeah. Um, this is very, very important. If you don't, if you have a like a room that's got no furniture in, there is nothing, nothing I hate more than stand in a room with no furniture, okay? Completely blank. Try if you can, and nobody will spot this. Uh, for instance, if you're lacking some furniture in um, a, a blank room, take it. Once you finish shooting in the room that's decked out with all the best furniture, take some of it and put it in the blank room. Um, you know, you can do it with potted plants. You can do it with um, uh, fresh flowers. You can do it with... Uh, uh, cutlery, um, bowls, um, anything really, and you can stretch your shoot out. You're not lying. You're just showing people how your property can look. Yeah. And you know, I've done my job basically if I've got people through the door. What happens after that is up, up to you. But um, if you look at that shot there, uh, okay, I'm trying to appeal to obviously um, – people that I think this is a rented property and this was the, the kids room. So I put a couple of dolls and um, almost like they're reading a, a book there and it's kind of cutesy, um, yes. nice colors, but you know, it tells a story, you know, your, your, your five-year-olds, your three-year-olds can sleep safely here. Um, and um, it just 
communicates lifestyle. That's really yeah. you're helping you're helping somebody in a family sell it to the rest of the family. And I've noticed this because if you, if your kids are attached to where they live, you want to be able to say, "Look at this amazing bunk bed," or "Look at the garden here," or "Look at the swimming pool." And it's, I'm sure it's the same with 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 um, partners as well. It's like you know, look at look at this, look at how we can be living here. So you you need to be giving sales tools to the family as well, don't you? Which I think you've done brilliantly in that in that photograph there. Thank you, thank you. Um, so try guys at home. You can do it. Okay. Have a look at, you know, different sort of shots that, that, that you like. You can do it. Um, okay. So don't think you can't. And the last bit was lifestyle, yeah? Which I think yeah. pretty much we've covered, yeah? Okay. okay. Well, as for selling the lifestyle, living the vida loca, this is what – this. imagine yourself here. That's what it's all about with marketing, isn't it? Imagine yourself here and work with people's emotions. Yeah, because emotions sell. OK, uh, we let's not get hung up about this. OK, I'm swayed by emotion. My, my wife thinks I'm fairly unemotional. I'm not. Um, you know, we're all emotional. Um, you know, why does somebody buy a Mercedes? Why do they have to buy a Mercedes? What makes them feel that they should have a Mercedes um, when, you know, they could have uh, a Renault Twingo or whatever? Um <sighs> It's people, you know, you understand people. People love that about people um, because that's what they are, you know. So yeah. appeal to people's subconscious and have a think about that. Um, and it works. It, it, subliminal messaging works. And it's not this dark art. It's just common sense because yeah. we're all open to it. You go in a supermarket today, right, the things that, put on shelves for a reason you know at certain heights you know all the stuff the way the kids can grab low that's there's a reason for that right. you're selling wow. selling selling is you've got to learn this selling there's nothing bad about selling this is why you know i love america they're always turned on you know to selling and selling is an art and i think you know the 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 british um and europeans have an understanding of it too the Portuguese don't sell so much. They're very genuine people, and um, they are not versed so well in the in in the visual sell. Yes, interesting cultural insight there. Amazing. So, talking of sales, uh, you've been amazing this morning, and you have been asked if you sell pictures here. I just peeked at your website, Terence. Lovely work. May I ask, do you have any for sale? Let's see I how do we have, see how we handle. I do, have a, I do have a few, but I'm going to be really frank with people now that um i sell pretty i sell all over the world okay um and a lot of them go very quickly um so usually i tend to work and this is why i like working with people uh, to commission because um working to commission lets me learn about the person what they like I mean, I've had some wonderful things like, you know, the lady uh, sent me some old photographs of a dear old mum who was had a great story. She she was worked at a certain a bomber base um, and I had to recreate like her in front of a like a 1940s-esque poster with the bombers in the background. Um, and uh, they loved it, you know, and bless her that she did finally pass away. But she got to see the picture um and 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 you know it really does it's a really nice job when that happens because you're sharing in people's lives and it's not just me just you know for hours painting away you get to learn about people you learn about the world and in a long-winded way i do have a few but not that not as many as you think because they go yeah and, and you're creating a relationship with people who you're creating art for it's not cash and carry um, it, this is this is about really creating a relationship with 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 the client and giving something that they can treasure for generations. So obviously that's that's not something you just pick up. Four hundred years, four hundred years. I love it. I mean, you're like it's like a sort of Native American idea, isn't it, of planning for seven generations? You've got it there, at least three generations, which I think is wonderful. You know, imagine this in the family, um, for for you know with the, with the great grandchildren. What a lovely perspective to bring. And yes, I chose my words wisely there. Perspective. Um, it's all been about perspective this morning. Portuguese photography for properties, 
and I think we probably will return to this subject. It's quite controversial. It lifted the lid a little bit on the um, the, on the, the industry itself, which again, um, I'm sure we'll have further conversations and specials about on how uh, to understand the industry here and how to make it work best for you. Go on, Terence. I was just going to say, you've had guys come on here. I've seen them, and they say, you know, the, the property Portugal uh, Portuguese market. Uh, you know, we can do a lot better. We come in, and we're going to do this, that, and the other. These guys have been at it for a long time, and the reason that they, you know, have various business practices is, um, you know, based around survival. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the economy is not as vibrant as America, the USA, or, or Britain, um, or many, you know, European destinations or Australia. They have to cut their cloth, and I'm not going to criticize them, okay, because they live under quite strict and um, formidable uh, economic circumstances. Um, so I, I, I don't really want to point the finger at Portugal and, and, and you know, crit criticise it because I just don't think that's a valid thing to do. Understand it, okay, live with it, and if you can help it, change it for the better, great. If you can't, then just don't point the finger. Fantastic to see you this morning, Terence. Thank you so much. Renaissance man, painter, photographer, videographer, an all-round good egg. He actually can strum a bit on the guitar as well. Um, yeah, yeah. Lost it. Here we go. He's going to play himself out, so to speak. Oh, am I? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> As much as you wanted, that. <laughs> Take care, mate. I do all my own links. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, thank you very much. We'll see you again soon, I hope. Ciao, ciao. Wonderful. Oh, see there you, Frank. Go. Ciao, ciao. There we go. We'll put the uh, link to that article uh, or to the blog, which is really rather good. Um, and what an amazing uh, fellow he is. Uh, Terence Austin, their artist. Well, wow. let's take a little breather there. Wasn't he incredible? remarkable man this guy is is full of surprises he is a bit isn't he oh blimey okay that was that I, I wasn't expecting that when we were doing our sound check earlier on he just he, he, he strummed a few chords and i just really put him on the spot there and he rose to the occasion guitar and singing need more of terence interesting show says jonesy so to conclude today frank uh, and to let everybody know what's going on people are used to you uh, coming here um, and talking about food and we've done that proud i think you've done that proud and we've moved on a little bit to include characters. Last week, Tony from up north in Portugal, who was incredible. Terence, mm -hmm. we've just had there. And we're going to keep interviewing great characters from around the country. And you were with one we discovered a few weeks ago, our dear mate Tiago uh, Zeferinho, the chef in the, um, in the Algarve in the beautiful town of Burgal, sending me all those pictures of food in that beautiful place. Tell us more about it. It was wonderful. I contacted I'm, – I'm in the Algarve. I've been in the Algarve for the past few days. And it was wonderful contacting uh, Tiago. Uh, he was he, he's just so generous. Um, he said, come by my restaurant. Uh, he opens uh, the restaurant about 4, 4.30 for, for takeouts. And he said, you know what, Frank, come, come by at about 2 o'clock in the afternoon and I'll do some, some little, little food here and there. Unbeknownst to me, I arrive, we arrive over there, meet him, opens a bottle of wine. We had a table, like the chef's table, put it right next to the kitchen where he was cooking. And um, as you show uh, these pictures, you will see uh, the man himself in action. It was okay. amazing being uh, in what, well, well it, it, in his, his kitchen was small, but the food from a small kitchen like that, the food that he was producing, this is the town of uh, Burgau, beautiful little, um, fishing town, and once again, being so humble, he says, "Oh, it's a little fishing village. You arrive over there, and you get get a you look at this, and then this is his food. Uh, he uh, did three different uh, ways of um, um, what was that? Uh, you heard, you? Pardon." The octopus. Oh, but that's not oh, yeah, octopus. the octopus. He he did he did octopus three different ways, and it is it is uh, there is a way to cook it, and he does such an amazing way. He he one of the ways he presented it, where it was crispy outside, on the inside it was kind of soft. Mm. 
And this guy is an artist. I encourage anyone who uh, goes near Borgao. It's right next to Lagos. If you are in the Algarve, to go and check him out. Um, uh, it's uh, his restaurant's name is Oklubi Tapas and Bar. Um, in the back, and he he didn't want me saying this. In the back, he's got like um, a little um, uh, thing set up for sports fans where you can stand, it's standing room only, and you can watch a football game. There's pictures of footballers all over the place. Just just a character. Look at this, um, uh, uh, the octopus. This is the third one that he did. It was amazing to eat. Not only does it look great, it was amazing to eat. Oh, here we go. This is him in his, uh, his kitchen. Chef, what do we got going over here? So first... We're gonna grab this here, and we're gonna plate everything. So we have our sweet potato from Al Mhm. Mm we're gonna just place it nicely. In the local ceramic plate? Yes, from Rapuzere, if anyone is interested. And what we're gonna do next? Now, we're gonna put, this is, my tomato sauce with Avdi Provence garlic, some spices, some Jamaican pepper, and some, uh, what's the name? Tomato rosa. It's a normal tomato, and then I've put a little bit of tomato rosa. Uh -huh. It's local, it's a really ugly tomato, uh -huh. but it's very nice and juicy. When you, when you crunch it all, it gives this uh -huh. color. Tomato is usually the ugliest, the tastiest. Yes, always. <laughs> That's what I always say. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter how it looks. There's no it's, way this looks ugly, chef. This looks amazing. This looks beautiful. It will matter how it's gonna taste. So we yes. have here our rainbow carrots. Wow. Mm -hmm. We have white carrots. We have yellow carrots. We have purple carrots. <laughs> and we have orange carrots. Wow. With rosemary. He, he did wow. the entire shebang. This looks gourmet, but it's not going to be looking gourmet. <laughs> Sorry. No. It's not going to look gourmet as soon as I get into it's this, chef. I got to destroy this. It's going seconds. to look like a full plate. That's what like we want. Yeah. Yes. This is my new dish. So it's a lot of hours putting together on it. Let's see if you guys like it. Oh, we can love if it. If not, don't tell nobody. Because, no, 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 no. <laughs> there no. is no chance. There is no chance. Yeah. We want everybody to see what Chef Tiago Zeferino is doing over here and the food that he's creating in this wonderful town of Burgau. By the way, it is not a small fishing village. <laughs> It no. is a Chef wonderful Tiago. Chef Tiago tried to keep the secret from us. And it's a, such a wonderful it's town. It's such a wonderful little town. We've been having such a wonderful time with him. And you guys should come over here and taste his food because this guy creates magic on a plate. And look at this magic. I look totally at what love um, polvo, yes. octopus. It's beautiful. This is my normal portion, so you guys know my tapas, they are not as right. they're supposed to this be. Is a, this is what I call a fat man's portion. <laughs> and uh, fat men, all, everywhere, be proud, come and eat over here, <laughs> and you will enjoy. I like to sear well my, what I'm do it my, I like to sear well my octopus in one side, because it's, it needs to be some texture and some mm -hmm. crunch and something. So, now what we're gonna do? That's it. Zoom in, zoom in. Something's frying now. A little bit of rosemary, mm -hmm. ah. and then we're just gonna put on top. It's just a couple of seconds, and it's done. I'm open on the 19. Uh, my restaurant, not my restaurant, my tavern. It's open. It's uh, open from 12 to 11 o'clock in the evening, and also it's. On the way down to the beach, on the first hill down, not the one, not the one on the left, the first on the right. When you come down to the beach, that's where the restaurant is located, and you can just drive down maybe 150 meters, and you will find me right away. On the left side, from the Blue Strip restaurant, 
So I fried also this. I'm sorry to change my conversation. Please, please, please go ahead. But I just fried this slightly bit because oh. that will give you some nice texture. We have our amandwich in here. We're going to give some crunchiness to this. This is next level sexiness. Don't you think? Yes. Yeah, and this is and this the king of papas. <laughs> yes. And this, yes. this is our, our friend time. Frank and Raquel. Thank you, Thank you so, so much. very much, Chef. My Thank pleasure. You so very much. Oh, Frank. And Rachel, Raquel there. You, it looks like you had the most wonderful time there. How delicious was it? Oh, it was it was divine. This guy eating with this guy, enjoying enjoying time over there. And uh, by that time, we were uh, three bottles in. So it was uh, a, a <laughs> bottles of white wine. So it was, <laughs> we were having such a great time. Uh, he took so much time out and uh, showed us around, showed us his kitchen, showed us how he works, um, what kind of sauces he's got. Uh, he uh, did um, uh, um, a bouchecha de porco, the pork cheeks. That was the next di uh, dish he did as well. And then he did um, chicken wings. Uh, this guy does everything. Yeah. Okay. Um, Colin wants to know the name of the restaurant. Club, what was it? Club? In Burgal, o o o o o club tapas and bar. Okay, so o club c l u b e tapas i bar, I guess. I bar. And and the man we're looking for is Tiago Zeferino, isn't it? And Zeferino. If people go to um to the um Good Morning Portugal Food and Wine Club. You've put more pictures up on there so people can see them a lot better I've than I put I the address over there as well and the name of uh, his tavern. Yep. Yeah. Oh Max Fly found it. Looking forward to visiting this week. Fantastic Max. That's say hi from from uh, us all here at Good Morning Portugal because that guy I think is going to be a star. I mean he, he can cook. Um he's cool as hell, isn't he? And he's very easy on the eye as well. Like, he he's um he's got it all going on, isn't he? A bit like Terence here this morning. Yes, he was. We were we were talking, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm a bit shy." And I go, "Stop lying! You are not shy. There's no way you're shy. You're a star." Yes, he is. He really is. So, um, so it's amazing how how you found him, uh, Frank. Invited him onto the show about a month ago. Uh, went to visit him. You've had a lovely time. You had him to yourself. You and Rachel yesterday. Sounds like you're having a lovely time there. So good for you. And we look forward to um, talking to more characters. We had Terence this morning, of course, um, who. Um, Top marks to Terence uh, from Paul. The, the fellow photographers, I, th I think they're a bit competitive photographers, uh, but they've been very gracious in their praise uh, and compliments this morning. Johnny um, really enjoyed it as well. Good job, Terence, from fellow photographer Johnny Professional. Um, and Paul is a professional as well. Uh, top marks to Terence. I think Lee enjoyed that. Maxine as well. So, yes, these are the characters we talk to uh, on the Good Morning Portugal show, me and Frank on a Monday. So the food tour has turned into the kind of Find those characters of Portugal. We'll have Taxi Man Eduardo, uh, Edmundo, I beg your pardon, on the show with us as well, who is sure to be a top character. If you know somebody in your town, village, uh, wherever in Portugal, and you think they should be on this show talking to me and Frank on a Monday morning, just point us in the right direction. I think we're going to have some fascinating conversations. So, Frank, have a, day, a great day. Everybody else, have a great day. Frank, did you want to say anything more, uh, just a final word to make people even more jealous about your uh, Burgao experience with uh, Tiago there? Well, it, it, they can go and look at the food page. There are all kinds of pictures of um, the, that part of the Algarve, which is not highlighted very often. Uh, the big towns like Lago, Sportimão, uh, and Albufera, they take all the glory, but there's so much to do as you drive along the coast uh, on that highway. There is so much to do and so much to discover in the Algarve. Yes, so true, so true. It does get a bad reputation. We didn't, uh, in some ways, or it gets misinterpreted. I think this is a, a very fair point that Terence was making this morning. Be fair, put things into context, and I think you really need to do that with the Algarve. More pictures from Frank in our food group, food and wine group, uh, where we have all our wine tastings um, events uh, listed there as well. So that's in the comments now. That's how you find us on there. Do join us, and, and let's, let's talk about Portuguese food and wine on there. Final few goodbyes. Love, great presentation, uh, but doesn't the food go cold, says Beverly? It, it depends how quickly you put it in your mouth. I think with Frank, there was no chance of it ever going. There's no chance. <laughs> and you, he's, still, he's working so hard on the presentation. Chef, I'm going to be destroying that in a few seconds. <laughs> 
And finally, peace, brothers and sisters. Have a happy day. Oh, and excellent uh, interview by Frank, by the way, uh, from Douglas, who loves Bogart as well. I think his, uh, yeah, if, if your brother uh, lets his uh, holiday villa out, do give us the details of that as well, Douglas, in our food and wine group on Facebook. Everybody, a torosh. Have a great day. Cheers, Frank. Cheers, Terence. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. And uh, have, a, have, have a wonderful day today. Let's play out with our wonderful exit video from the wonderful Peter Wilton Davison. Ashton here at the Pella. Yeah.